What's up everyone, it's Lasergician. We are going to be doing a reanimator deck today at the request of a commenter by the name of Mr. Putch82. Saw, you know, my friend DT Blade playing a reanimator deck and asked if we could do it too. Uh, one thing to note that I think is really interesting is that there's no such thing as just one reanimator deck. Reanimator is an entire class of decks, and usually they revolve around a couple of key things. The first is this card right here, Hopeless Necromantic. Hopeless Necromantic is the entire uh, linchpin behind the early game of most reanimator decks. The idea is that on turn three, you plop down Hopeless Necromantic after having used your power at least once while you have Disc of Circadia as your power. So what does this do? Well, what that does is Disc of Circadia says when you go into night mode, Disc of Circadia flipping between night and day, you discard a card and all minions have Slayer 1 until the end of night. And so, or rather, until the until night comes. Uh, so what that means is all of the minions are going to be doing one extra damage to combat with each other. After discarding a card, the intent is to discard something really, really big. Uh, for this, we're running two copies of Volcanic Ricey, 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 not sure, and Living Mountain, along with a copy of Indric Beast, a copy of Vilja Wind Fury, a copy of Alkanost, and three copies of Volkov Heavy. These are all really, really, really good uh, creatures that can get on the board and really establish a lot of control, and if aren't dealt with early, really can close out the game. And the idea is that having discarded one of those with the disc, and then plopping down Hopeless Necromantic, which is really easy to kill off with combat because everything has Slayer, you're going to get one of these big BV cards way ahead of schedule. So, what do you do if that doesn't work? Say you don't draw one of your big things, say you don't draw your Hopeless Necromantic. Well, you can fall back on a controlling or ramping game plan, in this case a little bit of both. So, very similar to the blue-green ramp deck that I played a couple of videos ago, we have a couple of the key blue and green control and ramp pieces. Grinning Kolobok makes it so that we can get our Magicka up there. We're not running the uh, Norn Data Core. It did get nerfed. Still good, just not as good. But also, we're not as reliant on um, ramp in this deck as we are in that deck, so we're not going to bother with it. We have some early game defense like Einyar Thane. And uh, down here we have Born Again, which, especially in disc decks, is really, really good. You can discard Born Again using your power, and then at the end of your turn, you're just going to get it right back. So you basically discarded nothing in order to get the disc flip, and then when you flip the disc again, you draw a card. So this is a way to get a lot of card advantage over the course of the game. Marching Orders is just really nice utility. If you're against an aggro deck and you've reanimated something huge, well, they can just play on the other side of the field and try and win that way. You can Marching Orders all of their minions back over toward your big beefy thing and start picking them off. Or if your opponent is playing defensive, you can move all of their stuff out of the way or your stuff out of the way and beat their face in. Control tools like Detained and Cataclysm, Thunderclap, and Magnus Thorson draw from Brainstorm because, you know, can't just rely on Disc as well as two copies of Raid the Tombs. Um, Led Astray for nice removal. And then a bunch of big beefy guys. One thing that I really like in this deck is Junkyard Valhalla. It is another reanimator tool, so if you ditch something huge and don't have Hopeless Necromantic, well, you can put down Junkyard Valhalla and it'll still come back. Say you just ramp a bunch and get something big, but it gets removed. Well, Junkyard Valhalla is going to bring it back eventually. It's just really nice for current value and I don't know, I think it fits in well here. We use Smite as our power because you're going to end up using your power a lot in this deck and the amount of chip damage that you do really, really shouldn't be underestimated. You can end up doing, I've done like 15 points of damage just because of Smite. If you're against an aggressive deck, you'll always be doing two. And if you stabilize, you'll really only end up needing maybe one or two smacks from one of your big, beefy top end creatures to close out the game. So Smite's what we use. Some people use Foresight as a way to stack their deck and make sure that they can either discard something useful next turn or make sure they have a card to burn. That's fine. I, 
if you want to do that, that's absolutely legitimate. I think Smite is absolutely better. Um, if you are curious about more into why Smite is good, talk to Aerobert, E. Robert, um, another Team Rank Star member who has done a lot of work on reanimator decks, specifically Green Yellow. He is a huge proponent of using Smite, and he can explain a lot better than I can why, because he's really good at this game and also really smart and nice, and you should talk to him. So that is Blue-Green Reanimator. It has a lot of cards in common with Blue-Green Ramp, but the way you get to the end game of big stuff happens a little faster in the best case and a little differently in the worst case. So it's a lot of fun. Uh, we're going to go do a couple games with this, and we'll see how it goes. So yeah, let's get into it. Okay, I turned off the recording for one second and immediately got a match, so that's cool. Or not? Hey, got it. Okay, cool. We're against Inanis. We'll see what we can make happen. Okay, we don't have... Uh, I, want, I think I want to keep this in case we want to... No, if we want to ditch, I'm playing Reese probably, so I can burn this. Play the Kolobok. So no Necromantic, unfortunately, but that's okay. Again, we have the Kolobok ramp plane instead. We have some good control tools between Magnus Thorson and Cataclysm. Our opponent in Alpha hit Mithril, so that's exciting. Uh, we're going to move around and smack. What do we want to burn? We're probably up against something uh, like Valkyries, given their journey and blue. That's my guess. Um, I'd like to get Brainstorm next turn, which means we need to burn something blue, so I'm going to burn Cataclysm. Uh, let's go ahead and get Disc Spinning. And get rid of Ricey. Rizzy? Ricey? I, I don't know how to pronounce this. <laughs> okay, they're blue-orange. They may be blue-orange tempo. Okay, we got Necromantic. That is really, really good for us. Um, this is at two energy, so it doesn't really matter one way or the other how much energy it ends up having. Um, we're gonna burn... Ooh, interesting choice. So we need to burn green so that we can get Necromantic on board. Um, Ricey is the one that's gonna be coming up. It has Blast 4, so it can really do a lot of damage to other creatures. So I think Marching Orders is probably good in case they want to get in the way. So I think we burn the Heavy. This is a play that I would go back to and look at and see if there was a potential different play there instead. If I lose, because Marching Orders versus Heavy is a very relevant conversation because we could have gone for Heavy next turn. Mm-hmm. That's fine. Um, this cannot move any more. I think I like going for a disc here. So this moves one over, and then we can just catch it uh, next turn. Hmm. So I think the plan is chase this try and get the trade, and then eventually marching orders. Actually, we're going to try and go for this one instead. Let's go ahead and use our disc. Get a card draw. Hmm. We already ramped a bit, but I do really want to get something blue to burn. And then we're just going to try and protect ourselves. Cool. So note here, we do not want Magnus Thorson to clear off anything that we could use to kill off our Necromantic. Okay. Ouch. Alright, we have a Thane of our own. Let's move this over. Uh, let's brainstorm first. Get our draws. Okay, let us is nice. We want to keep marching orders. What else is in the bin? 
So Junkyard Valhalla won't be relevant anytime soon, more likely than not, so we can just go ahead and lead this astray. So we have a, a couple pretty nice plays coming up, assuming this dies. Okay, it did not, that's fine. Uh, so we can go Magnus into trade, that would clear it off. I think at this point we can burn the Thane. We'll play Magnus. How does this get tricked? Okay, here's what we're going to do. We're going to Magnus all the way over here so that it can't be traded into. We make this trade. We get this. Uh, and now we smite. We're going to ditch the Born again. And then we get it back. So that's one of those really nice synergies in this deck. And the intent here is to marching orders all of his characters, all of his uh, minions over to here so that we can clear all of them off with Ricey all at once. We'll see how it ends up going, but that's the idea at least. And then we get beat down value with Thorson. And pretty soon we get Indrik Beast as well. We could Indrik Beast next turn if we want to. We'll see if that's something we're interested in. Okay. I feel like we're in a pretty good position to just go for some very good tempo. Hmm. Yeah, let's... Well, actually, hold on. Here's another interesting point. If we... Marching orders all of his things to the left instead. We get uh, 4 and 12 damage through total. Let's do that. So we go there. We marching orders all of Ianus's minions. Oops. To the left. We blast through. Get them down to uh, 2. Ooh, detained is really nice. Uh, let's throw down Born again. Uh, in the middle, actually, because it can represent lethal. And it is very unlikely that we are going to be killed from 15 at this point. So we're looking to be in relatively good position. He only has six mana to act with. Something like a um, Magnus of his own to block here wouldn't do it. It would have to be, say, a Bounce Effect perhaps would do it. Hard Removal would, of course, do it. Okay, there's the Magnus. That does not do it. He needs to have one additional blocker, because we can remove this with Detained and Deported. There we go! So that'll be game number one in the bag for us. We're going to deport this back and get the damage through. Alright! It's a really good example of how that deck can operate. Uh, hope you enjoyed that. We're going to go ahead and uh, we'll see if we want to do one more. Dang, 50 points. I, I didn't see who that was. Hold on. Uh, let's take a look. Can I do this from here? No? Yes, I can. View profile. Hey, a Masters player. Look at that. Deck as legs. Cool. That's good for another. All right, game number two. Uh, something I was thinking about in between these games, there actually was not a lot of rare cards played in that first game. Almost everything in there was, um, you know, rares at most. There weren't a lot of mythics involved in that, which was really nice. Shows that, you know, the deck has, has plenty of potential, even if you are not uh, loaded with mythics. Really, all you need is the Necromantic. Born Again is really, really, really good to have. And then a couple bombs of whatever sort you want. Like, really, there are 
a lot of strong, strong cards. We don't need three Necromantics. Um, in every color. At all sorts of rarities. Uh, we're going to ditch the Born again for the synergy that we saw last game. Hey everyone, it's Editor Laser here, and just a quick note, obviously the correct play there was to ditch the Vilja Wind Fury and not the Born again. That would have made this game substantially easier for me if I had played that correctly and gotten a bomb into the discard pile. Magnus Thorson would have been great too, but in general, it, Born Again Ditch there was the wrong play, and either Wind Fury or Thorson would have been much better. So keep that in mind, and uh, fun exercise, keep an eye on this game and imagine how much better it would have been if I had done that. Okay, cool. Let's get back to it. Let's write back pretty soon. So like for instance, Vilja Wind Fury, very solid uh, card that you could want to reanimate. It's a uncommon. You probably will run into one of those pretty soon, and if not, then you can get it from crafting very simply. So you, this is not a deck that requires a lot of very high-end rare cards. It helps a lot, don't get me wrong, but it's not dependent on rare cards. Oh no, they're doing construction again. No! Oh, that's really bad. <laughs> Remember when I said this game would be easier? Well, turns out that sometimes you get rewarded for making the wrong play. If we had made the right play and gone for ditching one of the bombs, it would have just gotten removed from the discard pile thanks to Ghoul. So turns out, sometimes lucky. So we need to clear that before we can do any necromancy. which I think we do by Born Again. It trades because we are currently in day and everything has Slayer 1, so it will do three damage instead of two. Okay, so we do end up getting that trade, which is super nice. Would like to get some blue to burn. Okay, okay. Uh, we're going to burn blue. Uh, problem now is that our resurrection would get on born again, which not exactly what we're looking for, um, except it would come back to our hand at the end of this turn, so never mind, we're fine. We're going to burn that. We're going to power, because we have to dump something. Ooh, Thunderclap is great. Um... And then we are going to pass. So next turn is going to probably just be Magnus. Mm -hmm. Note that he is in winter, so everything will take three damage for Magnus instead of two. Brainstorm, I, I kind of want to keep, but we have a lot of resources right now, so I think it's probably okay to burn that. Uh, we're going to just play down Magnus. We don't actually need to trade into this. Reason being, we'd like to get uh, Wind Fury into the discard pile first, because this is uh, just an absurdly good board control card, because it can uh, deal damage to a whole bunch of leads at once. And also... If he is forced to deal with this, then it goes in the bin anyway. So this is a nice racing tool that we can use. Plus we need to have something that Necromantic can die into, which is very important. Okay, looks like Magnus Thorson is going to be our resurrection target. That's fine by me. Uh, that means we do not need to power and discard anything if we don't want to. So this happens every time. And now I actually would like to power because that would mean that we will be in day, this will have Slayer, and it will trade evenly. We're going to discard Born again because it's free. He is taking damage from the Serendipity Ifrit. Okay, Seal of Exile. That's, again, not a problem. Because look, we have all of these control tools in our hand already. Let's see... Uh, we're going to start with Thunderclap. Burn, probably a lead astray. And get born again. On the field. D 
defend. So raid the tombs into Thunderclap, probably the play next turn. I assume he's going to play a whole bunch of stuff. Because you would think, you know, you've seen Magnus, you've seen one Thunderclap, you're probably safe to play a bunch of things out, right? Wrong! Very wrong. Ooh, Dashing Ringmaster is scary. So Thunderclap is absolutely going to need to be a play. Volkov Heavy. That's a good one. Um, what will we banish? We banish Magnus and Thunderclap. I'd actually... Mm -hmm. So here's the argument, right? If we draw Junkyard Valhalla, Magnus Thorson probably wins us the game. The other argument is that Vilja Windfury also kind of just wins us the game with the Blast 2 if we're against a token deck. So I think if we get that on the board next turn, we're probably okay. Volcanic Racy, same thing. Blast 4 uh, can be crazy powerful. We'll have access to 7 mana next turn, so I think Heavy and Born Again looks good. I hate that. <laughs> I really hate that. So we need to put something in front of that. We don't really have a choice. Okay, Thane is fantastic. We can discard Born Again, throw Heavy down here, and throw Thane down here. That does trade because, again, we are in day, so everything has Slayer. Uh, we didn't play around Temptation, which is a mistake. Very, very big mistake, actually. We should have put this here so that Temptation would not... What? Oh, he only had one orange to use. Oh, that's so unfortunate for them. Really fortunate for us, though. You need to trade, otherwise this starts getting a bunch of value. Ooh, okay. That's a mistake on their part. So we're going to smite. Uh, we're going to take another Thane, I think, because we already have one Brainstorm. This trades, and it trades favorably. We trade there. Uh, we take the second Thane every time. And we're looking to be in good shape. We're, we're low on health, don't get me wrong. Glory Something like a second detained uh, still screws us up pretty badly. Hmm... How do we play against Around Detained the best? We don't trade that, that's for sure. We want this to stay there. Well, is that true? Because then he would just trade it off himself. Uh, this trade makes it pretty simple, unless... Yes, I think that's the right case. The right call. Uh, make that trade. And now we need to play our minions such that they are blockable if uh, Temptation comes through. So we play Rizzi there. So this way, if any of these three are Temptationed, then they are blocked. Granted, we would, you know, lose all of our minions because of the blast effect, but hey, that's, that's fine. It's better than losing the game, right? We could lose to Double Ignition. We could lose to two charge creatures. Hey, we got there. Nice. So that's a, a actually two really good games to show off how this deck works. The first, we got a really good Necromantic play. The second, we kind of just played control, got a little bit of ramp, ended up winning through traditional controlling ramp mains. So that's kind of how the deck plays out from both uh, sides. I, I think that's, you know, kind of how it just is going to go. So uh, let me know what you thought of that. There are a lot of other variations of Necromantic decks. There's uh, green purple that's been going around. Green yellow is a pretty popular choice. Those are kind of the two that I see alongside blue the most. But if you'd like to see any of the other colors, let me know. If there are any other decks you'd like to see shown off, then I'd love to try and put those together for you. And let me know if you have a certain budget in mind also. 
If you want to see more budget decks, that's great. If you want to see more expensive decks, also great. I'd love to let you, you know, see what the potential decks are out there. So uh, this has been two games with a blue-green Necromancer deck. I hope you have enjoyed it. If you did, please subscribe and leave a like. It really, really helps a lot. Leave a comment on what you'd like to see in the future. If this deck works well for you, I'd love to hear that too. And hopefully it works that well for you. Until then, see you next time.